Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Thoughts from the Throne. This is number 24. We've done 24 of these things. That's a lot. And I wanted to start today by talking about the state of the professional wrestling industry. And guys, you are very, very lucky and very fortunate to be a professional wrestling fan living in this era, this period, because it is a phenomenal time for the professional wrestling industry. Business is great right now. Uh, there's just so many outlets. There's so much media. There's so many ways to obtain whatever kind of product you're looking for. And let's start at the top, which is obviously World Wrestling Entertainment. WDB is doing incredible right now. They're in the midst of the two most financially rewarding, the biggest television deals in history. They're on Fox, they're on USA, they have NXT on Wednesdays on USA. I mean, the WWE is, is on fire when it comes to their television rights and their television earnings. And then if you look at the network, that's such an incredible business piece. That's an incredible deal, like, you know, totally groundbreaking when it comes to professional wrestling. The WWE network is incredible. They do so much great original content. And then their, their social media, uh, all, all their digital stuff is so, so huge and has such a, a reach across the globe. So kudos to WWE for just like leading the way and doing such amazing things. AEW, we just found out uh, yesterday, actually, that they just signed a new four-year deal with TNT. So that's awesome. They do live TV every Wednesday night. They're doing really well. They're, they're, they're new. They're fresh. They're exciting. A lot of cool stuff going on there. And, and I think it is very important to the health, for the health of the industry, that AEW does well, and I hope they succeed. And I think just, you know, the more competition and the more places there are for guys to work, it just makes everyone be more creative. It keeps everyone on their toes. It makes everyone work harder. And also, it's just more enjoyable for the fans because it allows you to see different things, different types of products. I think Impact Wrestling is doing, doing very well. They've had a bit of a resurgence. I mean, literally, there have been times where Impact was written off, and they're like, this is it. This company's over. It's closing. It's folding. I was there for part of that but they truly are stronger than death. Impact Wrestling, TNA, they are mas forte que la muerte. I mean, they won't go away. They are like unkillable in so many ways. And I think they're doing some good stuff right now. They found their niche and they do a little bit of a different product and, and they've really embraced it and, and, and they've gone to it. So, you know, kudos to them for doing that. I'm glad they're doing well. And it's also very cool that they're on Access TV and they are a majority owner of that network. So good for, uh, good for Impact. Glad they're doing well. MLW is another company that is uh, up and coming, and I know they are making some strides and doing well. I've never worked there. I don't really know anyone well that, that works there as far as their business affairs go, but it, it's good to know that they are an up and coming brand. NWA, Billy Corgan, Dave Lagana, worked with them very close at TNA, and uh, very happy they're doing the NWA thing. I love the fact that it's a throwback show and they're very true to what the NWA was back in the day, doing a studio show. And I think it's also very smart from a business plan, you know, and, and, a, and a business model. You know, financially, they're not like dumping everything in and expecting some quick turnaround. They're really starting slow. And I know they'd said in the past they have a 20 year plan. So it's going to be really fun to see that come to reality. Ring of Honor is another place that just uh, recently seemed to hit a reset button and is starting again kind of fresh. So I uh, wish nothing but the best. I had a great time in Ring of Honor, and there's so many great, talented guys there. And I hope Ring of Honor continues to do well, and they continue to thrive, and they have a great 2020. And I think when it's all said and done, in my opinion, this is my opinion solely, doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong. I think in this day and age, there's so much wrestling out there. There's so much content. I think the secret to success is variety. You need great traditional style wrestling. I think you need the exciting cruiserweight, hot spot, spot monkey type wrestling. I think there's always room for a broken universe or a Firefly Funhouse or a Papa Shango type segment in every show. I, I think that's good. I think it's, it's, it's variation. I think there's always room for something hardcore if it's a ladder match or a cage match or you know a false count anywhere or no DQ match. I, I think all those things are very good. And I think if you use a little bit of all that, you sprinkle around, you know, when you have a fan base, you're gonna have a lot of people that are interested in a lot of different things and you try and give everybody a little bit of a flavor that they enjoy. That's my opinion. Not saying it's right, not saying it's wrong, but that is my opinion. I think wrestling now more than ever in 2020 needs to be a variety show. You know, but whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability and make it good. Whether it is the in-ring action as an athlete or the entertainment aspect as an entertainer. And I also think it's very important to, to be very honest, have a very honest relationship with your fans. 
you know, and, and don't let your fans feel like you're letting them down or you're depriving them of what you promised them. If you promise your fans something, I feel like you have to deliver. You know, I think it's very important to have a, as a wrestling promoter or wrestling company, I think it's very important to have a monogamous relationship with your fans. You know, like don't, don't screw around with your fans, you know, be good to them, especially those are the people that are keeping you in business. I asked fans for a Twitter question that I would discuss on this Thoughts from the Throne. And this week's question is from at C Wrestling UK on Twitter. It's a very cool Twitter account, which is a YouTube account, and they do a lot of theory videos. I know they've done a lot of great, fun theory videos on my free little elite stuff. I know they do a ton on Bray Wyatt and The Fiend and the Firefly Funhouse. And they ask, what wrestling legends have you wish you could wrestle one-on-one? -on -one? And for me, that's a very easy, easy question to answer. It would be Macho Man Randy Savage. I would love to have the broken brilliance of Broken Matt Hardy versus the Macho Man Randy Savage. The madness, you know. I think that would be so much fun. The promos would be amazing. That is what initially drew me to Macho Man was his over-the-top personality, the, the weirdness in his voice, the, the, the way he would say things and the words he would use and, and the phrasing of things. And then whenever he'd go to the ring, he was a heavyweight wrestler, but he would do the elbow drop off the top. He would do the double axe handle to the floor. He was also like an, ex, an exciting guy to watch. So the Macho Man was my first favorite of all time, and I never got to work with him at all. So if I had a dream match, it would be Broken Matt Hardy first, the Macho Man, Randy Savage. All right, lastly, I wanted to take a second and talk a little bit about television. Uh, just recently, I finished up the first two seasons of Jack Ryan, and I gotta admit, the reason I gave Jack Ryan a chance was because I was hoping it would uh, help me fulfill the loss, the bereavement that I suffered after I watched all the 24 and all of the uh, Jack Bauer stuff. Uh, I did enjoy Jack Ryan. I thought it was very good. I thought the show was like shot very, Beautifully, a lot of prepossessing cinematic shots, like drone shots over these beautiful locations. It's a very worldly show. It happens all over the planet. And, and I think it's done very well. It was a, a fun show to watch and I would recommend it, especially if you were a fan of, of uh, Jack Bauer. I, I think Jack Ryan is in the same vein in the way, except he's much more human. You know, Jack Bauer was almost like this machine who could be heartless or emotionless. Jack Ryan is a very like normal, normal guy. He's much more humanized than a Jack Bauer is. But I totally enjoyed the show, the first two seasons. I also watched season one of The Center, and I was blown away. Awesome show. The story was so good. I loved how you see in the very first episode, like this incident that happens with Jessica Bill's character, and you're trying to understand why and how it's revealed, and layers kind of are peeled away as we move through the first season, through those eight episodes. And I loved the storytelling. And and Bill Pullman, his character as the detective was so good. How he was so like strange and weird and kind of creepy. When it was all said and done, he was like a good guy, and you really wanted to root for him, and you, you wanted to see him be good and happy. So those are the things I just finished watching. Uh, the things I have just downloaded to watch next are the second season of The Center and the first season of a show I've heard a lot about for many, many years, The Wire. You guys be well, and we'll see you next time on Thoughts from the Throne.